Ha ha ha! For the first time in six years, the New York Metropolitans are back in postseason play. How's it going, everybody? Thank you guys all so much for chiming in for the latest postgame show here on Wardy NY. And we have so much to deep dive. We have so much to react to. We're going to get my co-host for Believe in Queens podcast, Joe Sorallo, in the show later on in this one. But before we do, more than anything, let's get those W's in the chat. The Mets are back in playoffs, baby. They are finally back. The last time this team was playing playoff baseball, I was 16 years old. I'm 22. We're about to do a celebration here on the show. We're going to do a little cheers, guys. I normally don't drink on the stream. And again, no no worries at all if you're, you, you don't want to do it with me. But it needs to be done. This is a big night. Again, nothing. Again, this is step one of getting the big job done. The Mets are still trying to win the division. They're still trying to go on a deep postseason run. But for now, we can celebrate. Because again, this cannot be understated. The Mets haven't been in the playoffs in six years. I was literally 16. I never thought that I would be sitting in this chair talking to you all right now. And this is my first of hopefully many years covering this club as they enter postseason play. I'm so proud of this team. And again, going from ranting last week about the Cubs series, I knew the potential with this club since day one, and they're continuing to prove they had a phenomenal ball game today. Mad Max coming off the IL, six perfect innings. So much positives take away. John, thank you so much for the donut. I appreciate that. Have a drink on me, playoff bound. Thank you so much. I certainly will, guys. And again, thank you guys all so much for chiming in. Just make sure to smash that like and subscribe and help us get to 100 likes for our first short-term goal and help us also get to 18K subs for the next short-term goal on the channel, guys. We have a big giveaway that you guys saw in the community tab regarding a Max Scherzer bobblehead that we'll discuss a little bit further here in the show. But guys, before we break down this game, we got to enjoy it. We need to enjoy this win. Enjoy this night, guys. This has been a long time coming. We all knew I was under the utmost certainty that the Mets would be making the playoffs at minimum since day one this season. They have done that when they still have over 10 games to go this year, and they are still looking to stay secured in first and hopefully win the division by the year's end, guys. I'm absolutely pumped up. I cannot wait. Guys, let, let's, let me speak no further, guys. Everyone, if you guys, of course, are legal, if you're 21 and up here in the States at least, crack out a drink. Again, you deserve it, guys. Mets fans I know have been through hell and back. I'm not as much of a season Mets fan as I know many of you guys are that have been fans of the team for decades, year after year after year, years on end. But for me, at least, this it just feels so special because this is really, again, the first time since 2016 where I've been following the team every single day. This team is something special. The best team that I personally witnessed as a fan right up there with the 2015 club. Again, being a younger fan, I'm only 22. So I just want, let's crack out a drink. Again, guys, crack them out. You know the drill. I might be having a little bit of peach crown here. We're going to do a little cheers. I know when Joe, when he comes in the show in a little bit, he'll be doing a little bit of a cheers too. But everyone, you did more than anything. The Mets don't just deserve this, but so do their fans. So do every single one of you guys watching this live or in replay. This has been long awaited and it just feels, it to say it feels good that the Mets are officially locked in postseason play. After hearing the schmucks, Week in, week out, month in, month out since the beginning of the year saying the Mets wouldn't even make playoffs. Playoffs? What do you mean playoffs? Yes, the Mets have secured a playoff spot. Let's enjoy it now, guys. So, again, I'm pouring the crown. As you can see, I ain't no schmuck. Uh, don't hate yourself, Corey. I, I love Peach Crown. Again, uh, if you guys don't like it, that's fine. I'm also 22 years of age, so you have to keep in mind. I'm sorry if my taste is not the same as yours. I don't like IPAs with beer, for example, but I'm sure once I'm 40, I will. So, just... Things of that nature. But again, everyone, enjoy. Enjoy this night. We got a lot to get into. This is going to be a rock solid post game show. Man, does this feel good. This feels real good. All right, guys. Cheers. There we go. We also got a nice New York. It's hard to see. It's a New York skyline glass guy gifted for my birthday, along with the crown as well. Man, that feels really good. That feels really, really good. I'm. Uh, from, from Max doing what he did tonight, from the offense balling out against Corbin Burns. Oh my goodness, Max Scherzer outdueled a pitcher in a pitcher's duel again this year. Color me surprised. I mean, look, for me, it was a matter of how deep would Max go today, as I discussed in my episode of uh, episode 22 of Believe in Queens that came out earlier today. Check it out if you haven't already, guys, with Anthony Recker and Joe Sorallo. 
to see Max come out and shove the way he did. Six perfect innings, guys. The only reason why he didn't have the chance to go for a full no-no or even a full perfect game was because he was on a pitch count. He only threw, oh guys, I realize you do have it messed up on the graphic, I apologize. Max did not throw 104 pitches today, he only threw 68. I forgot to edit that from our last post game show. Again, if I'm not messing up at least one number in these post game shows, you know something's going wrong. I was just too giddy. Once the Mets are up five and out, them like this game's unlocked. They're gonna win this one, and they are of course gonna secure a postseason berth. So I'm just I feel electric. No matter if you guys are drinking alcohol or you're drinking whatever you're drinking, water. It doesn't matter. Just make sure you you crack yourself a drink, sit back, relax, and know that the Mets have playoffs on lock regardless on what happens with this division by the season's end. Hopefully they secure first and, again, have a big series in Atlanta for their second and the last series of the year because at this at this juncture, it's pretty obvious that it's going to come down to that series in Atlanta more than likely on who's going to win this division. But for the Mets, again, to come out, you even had Steve Cohen, guys. Steve Cohen flew, made sure he was in Milwaukee. He tweeted himself. He was sitting in nosebleeds today, and he tweeted jokingly how he was trying to get Brewers fans to be converted into Mets fans. Imagine if you're a Brewers fan in attendance tonight in nosebleeds, and you don't know who Steve Cohen is, and he's sitting next to you. Oh, you know, just a nonchalant, you know, multi-billionaire, the owner of the Mets. This man is literally just like us in the sense of his fandom, and that's why we love him to death. If it isn't for Steve Cohen, tonight doesn't happen. This season doesn't happen. And the great future that this club has doesn't happen if they were still under the previous regime. So shout out to Steve. Shout out to this entire Mets club. They have grinded all year long. They've had great highs. They've had some lows that we've seen from last week. But more than anything, they were able to do exactly what they need to do in step one of a multi-step pipe. Tri- uh, can't even speak right now tight pace on really making something great happen this year. There's no denying this is one of the best seasons in Mets history. You could easily say this is the best since 2015. You could easily say that this is the best since 2006. I mean, there are so many comparables of previous Mets clubs and runs. What happens in postseason, again, we'll find out and we'll be covering on the channel. I'll be in attendance for the first Mets playoff game this year. Whenever that's going to be, I cannot wait. I'll probably do a stream on my phone after. Hopefully we have better audio because my audio sounded like straight duty. When I was at the Mets game yesterday, I did it off my phone. I don't know what went wrong there. Tim, thank you so much for the dono step one complete. Now on to step two, LFGM. LFGM and D, my man. Guys, the New York Mets are back in playoffs. We'll break down this game in another five minutes or so. It's going to be a long postseason show today. Uh, yeah, literally, I was going to say post game, but it, it is a postseason show because the Mets are back in playoffs. Literally, guys, to give you guys some context, when the Mets won, made it into playoffs in 2016, was watching that team every single game of that season, obviously. When they lost to the Giants in the wild card with no center guard on the bump, facing Mad Bum, which is still haunts me. Kurt Casale still haunts me. Um, Point being is that I was at my buddy's house, and I remember it like it was yesterday. I remember being so heartbroken that the Mets couldn't, couldn't get past that wild card game. And it's just nuts now because, again, at that juncture, if you would have told me that six years later I'd be sitting in this seat, I would be having this type of platform here on YouTube. Again, I'm, this is by no means trying to brag. I'm just trying to further emphasize how grateful I am. We are literally the top Mets-centric channel on YouTube, and we've only been in, the, in this thing for not even a full two years now. Mets-centric, not affiliated with the Mets or SNY. It's all because of every single one of you devoted, loyal viewers, diehard Mets fans that made this all possible. So not just from the Mets and Steve Cohen that I thank so much more than anyone else, I thank each and every one of you. This has been a pleasure. I I, I I don't even know what to do. My, I don't even know what to do with my hands, as Will Ferrell would say. What was that from? Uh, to, um... Uh, Talgated Knights, I think so. I, I, I'm so pumped. I'm so pumped. Um, oh, my goodness gracious. I'm so excited, guys. We're going to get Joe in the show in a little bit because he's going to want to share his raw reaction to the Mets clinching playoffs. But more than anything, guys, before we deep dive this game, get in the nit and gritty, share raw reactions, continue to let me hear it in the live show. Let me know in the comments for people on replay as well. How are you feeling knowing that the Mets are back in playoffs for the first time it, since 2016 i was literally not just a short schmuck back then i was a minor i was 16 years old damn does this feel good i know we got some viewers that literally like weren't even 10 when that happened that are watching this to my you know 16 year olds watching this show or of course we have older fans i mean everyone i appreciate you guys all but more than anything uh you personally take full credit <laughs> sounds about right 
we got the drink here. I'm going to have another sip. I'm going to show you guys the big giveaway we have on the channel that I hope you guys are excited about. And then we'll get into breaking down this game. Damn, that's good. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm a schmuck. I love my peach whiskey. Call me crazy. I love it. Always will. Been on that grind. But guys, let's share the big giveaway in case you guys don't know. We're only, we're like just over 100 subscribers away, everybody. We're giving away a Mad Max ticker bobblehead, strikeout counter ticker bobblehead once we hit 17.7K subs on the channel. So if you're new here, if you're enjoying the content, if you're enjoying consistent Mets post-game coverage, podcasts after every series and everything in between about the team in Queens, this is a place to be. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, share your friends as well. And again, once we get to 17.7, I don't even want to wait till 18K because I know it's still going to take a little bit figured. Let's just do it because we're only 100 to 150 subs away, not even now. And we're going to do a giveaway to one random subscriber. We're just going to do a randomi randomizer that I'm going to do on, um, on a website that I can find over the internet. And then I'll hopefully you guys reach out and then I will, of course, send it your way. And if not, then I'll go down the list of like second and third winners until someone actually responds on the community tab on Twitter, whatever it may be. And, and again, to give you guys an idea, this is what the bobblehead looks up close. It's all, I wish I could keep it for myself, but you guys deserve it more than I do. And again, this is just one of multiple giveaways that I'll be having coming out. We're going to have more merch giveaways that are going to be coming out. We have more merch that is coming out as well. New designs. I think you guys are going to get a laugh out of for our Believe in Queens merch. More, more giveaways are coming, but for now, hope you guys like this. The Mad Max from the giveaway of Friday night, not over this past month, I think, of the strikeout counter make sure to subscribe to the channel and get your chance to potentially win this bad boy i'm gonna put it aside i don't want to manhandle it again whoever wins it i wish again happy for you but let's put that down let's talk about this mets ball game this was a phenomenal phenomenal ball game for the new york mets you see the mets they're in the locker room they're having some champagne they're having some drinks steve cohen is there that's phenomenal this is just the first of many years where Steve Cohen is not only in attendance, but he's owner. He's in the clubhouse sharing his reaction to the Mets clinching playoff berths. Again, this to say, I would not be surprised if this is the first of numerous years in a row that the Mets won't only make playoffs, but either win the division or have themselves some really competitive seasons and postseasons. So I'm so happy. Again, it's no one's going too crazy in the clubhouse, which I love. I think they're staying calm, cool, collected. I know we got Alonzo. We got a lot of guys with this is their first time being in postseason play, like Alonzo, like McNeil, like the majority of this line. But then you have that nice balance of the veterans and the Scherzers, the DeGroms, the Lindors, et cetera, that have been in postseason play. Even Eduardo Escobar, when he was with the Brewers last year. So it's nice. They're, they're playing it cool. They're enjoying themselves. They're happy. But they know that, one, they want to win the division. Division is number one most important thing for them right now. Playoffs has already happened. It's over. It's done with. And then ultimately going on a deep run in this year's postseason is the most important. So that's just awesome to see. Again, very happy to see Steve with the team. I just I can't get over the fact that he was sitting in nosebleeds. John, thank you so much for the $100 donation. You're an absolute beauty. Thank you so much for that. I really do appreciate it. I cannot begin to tell you how much that means to me. Again, guys, the donations, that is a huge part of what funds the channel and everything. Keep this afloat for me to upgrade things. Again, for me to have this do this as my daily thing, as my full-time thing right now. So thank you so much for that, John. Let's get some John G hype in the live show right now. You absolute beauty. I love you so much, you schmuck. And again, when I say schmuck, I don't mean it as an insult. I mean it as a brother. Playoffs clinched. Step one, check. Still a long way to go. Let's enjoy the ride, Mets fans. Can't wait to see Warriors' blood pressure rise through the playoff run. I, I just I just hope that I can stay coherent. I feel like my ears are literally going to be muted in any and all Mets playoff wins that they get this year. So it's going to be crazy. It really is. I don't. I can't say what I know. I, I can't say what is going to happen. Again, I'm going to be in attendance for game one for playoffs, guys. So I'm going to lose my mind. I, sh fingers crossed the Mets win in game one of playoffs. I'm hoping that I have a voice for you guys to do a show right on my phone right after as I exit City Field. But John... Love you to death. Thank you so much for the $100 dono, you absolute beauty. Hype in the chat to John G once more for the big donation. Thank you guys so much. And, yeah, we're, we're about to br break down and get into this ball game because, again, the offense was stellar to do what they did against Corbin Burns. To get Corbin Burns out of this game in only 5.2 innings, 
five earned runs on the schmuck. He throws 100 pitches, and he only has four strikeouts. And again, Jake, literally, um, send you an email, no response. I'll have to check my emails, my friend. I apologize. A lot of the emails that I get tend to get lost in spam. And I, every single day, I don't, I'm not able to go through them completely because I get a lot of emails and notifications. So I apologize. Don't take it personal if I don't get back to you either over DMs or email or anything of that nature. Trust me when I say it's nothing personal. Again, when I'm interacting with the amount of people that I do on a daily basis for baseball and sports overall, it can be a little bit of a delay to get back to people. So don't, so please don't take it personally. Um, but again, yes, we know that Max is did not throw 104 pitches today. And no, he did not have five strikeouts. I'm an ass. I apologize. He had nine strikeouts, 68 pitches. I was starting to edit his line. And it's almost bothering me so much that I want to fix the graphic. You know what? We're going to fix the graphic. That's how much it's pissing me off. So bear with me one sec, guys. I need to update this freaking Scherzer graphic because, again, he had zero earned runs that he gave up today. I don't – you want to know why, guys? I was starting to edit. I put the no hits, and then I was starting to edit Warriors Top 5. I bounced back and forth between those things, and I'm just a schmuck and didn't get back to it time. So we're going to edit that right now. My apologies once more. Mad Max, six perfect innings. Man, of course – it. It's bittersweet that he was on a pitch count today. I got to say it really is because he's someone that – could you imagine if Max wasn't on a pitch count? He was only at 68 pitches through six. He could have at least at minimum weight went eight innings today, more than likely. But, no, we're going to we're gonna fix the graphic real quick. Then we'll deep dive the game, and they'll get your comments, questions, concerns, along with getting Joe Sorrell here in the live show. I'm an ass. I apologize. I know I'm an ass, but just, just give me a second. Let me, let me update this graphic real quick and continue. Let me know your thoughts in the chat, guys. Nine punchies, too. What a beauty. Awesome to see the Mets on the field. Would have been sick if the Mets were home to clinch playoffs, but it's okay. Not going to gripe about it. I'm just so happy that they're in the postseason before the final series of a year for a change. I mean... The Mets have had grinding seasons for quite a bit now. So to see them get this clinch this early in the year, oh, you see Alonzo, they're drinking beer on the field now. Oh, you love, you love to see it, baby. You absolutely love to see absolute scenes, as my brother Darren, UK Mets, you know who you are, would say. All right, guys, we got the graphic update now. There you go. I'm a schmuck. I should have did it earlier. Now let's get back to the live show. And there we go. I do see a donation. I'm going to address that quick. Ah, oh, feels so good to see them on the field. They deserve every single second of this, man. Every single second. Um, McBlam, thank you so much for the dono. Remember this season and this day. This is only the beginning of LGM Mets Dynasty. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much for the dono, McBlam. Love you to death. Love you to death, brother. All right, guys, let's talk about this ball game because this was this was a kick-ass ball game. Let's just keep it a buck. Let's let's be real. Uh, no pun intended. What buck? Let's say how it is. The Mets came out and had themselves a great ball game. It didn't start great. It didn't start great. We know that. But after they saw Burns for a couple innings, they started to grind him down. And Max Scherzer, again, was just simply unhittable from the start. All right, guys, let's talk about this ball game. Max Scherzer on the bump facing Corbin Burns. And as I said in the beginning of the show, Max has been in a lot of pit. It's so weird to see Billy Upler with a normal Mets hat on in the clubhouse. I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. I'm just watching the post game for them, too, as I'm talking live to you guys right now. Continue smashing that like and subscribe on, guys. Thank you so much. But we've seen Mad Max be up against Max Freed multiple times. We've seen Max pitch against the best of the best in MLB. And more often than not this year, he has been the better pitcher between the two. And he did exactly that tonight, guys. Max Scherzer in the first one, two, three inning with two strikeouts. In the second, one, two, three inning, one strikeout. In the bomb, in the pardon me, in the top of the third, Eduardo Escobar with an infield single, but Nito with a double play would end the inning. In the bomb of the third, Max Scherzer, again, when you have six perfect innings, you get a lot of one, two, threes. A one, two, three, third with one strikeout. In the fourth, the top of the fourth, Lindor with an oppo single. 
Jeff McHitts with a single, Lindor with a hit and run play, and then Pete Alonso taking a sinker down and in. How you doing? It's a piss missile. It's out of here. Big me Pete with a three run bomb, one of the best home runs I think we have seen from Alonso. That's more impressive, in my opinion, than that 445 foot nuke he hit against what was it, the Cubs, I think, because those were meaningless home runs won late in those games in the eighth and ninth inning. But more than anything, he hit it off of Corbin Burns, down and in, like it was nothing. Those are the types of pitches that Pete has struggled with when he hasn't been in the best groove this time. A fastball's up high, slider down away, and sinker's down and in. But no, he barreled that bad boy. He got the long reach. He makes it a 3 nothing ball game for the Amazons. And they never looked back, guys, in that fourth inning. In the bottom of the fourth, Max Scherzer. <laughs> Let me take a guess. A one, two, three inning with two strikeouts. In the fifth, Max Scherzer. One, two, three inning with two strikeouts. In the top of the sixth inning, Brandon Nimmo with a leadoff triple. Francisco Lindor back to back, baby. An RBI triple makes it a four nothing ball game. Guys, this is the first time since Jose Reyes, and I know I shouldn't say the man's name, but I'm going to, Jason Bay hit back-to-back -back doubles for the Mets in 2010. It's been 12 years since the Mets hit back-to-back -back doubles in a single ball game, and they did it here with one of the numerous things the Mets did right in this matchup. They get the 4-0 lead. McHits with a ground out. Alonzo with a strikeout. Daniel Vogel back against his former team in Milwaukee with it. Two out, opposite field, RBI double. The Mets' third extra base hit of the inning guys they would do nothing else in the six but they tack on two more they make it a five nothing ball game five zip through those six innings and the bottom of the six pardon me yeah max scherzer one two three inning with the strikeout that would be his final line only 68 pitches for mad max undoubtedly the number one star from tonight's show how can he not be in the top of the seventh uh you see eduardo escobar with a double tomas nito with a strikeout nemo would a walk Lindor would have fly out and McNeil would have ground out and the inning. The Mets do not score after getting a leadoff double by Eddie, but that's fine. I see Alonzo's on the phone in his post-game show right now, probably talking to his wife, all of his family and friends. You've seen everyone celebrate. I love again, I love that they didn't shake the bottles. You know, they didn't do anything crazy like that. They're just enjoying their drinks. They're posting all their stuff on Twitter and Instagram. Marte wishes he could be on the field. Hopefully, he'll be back with the Mets soon before the season ends. So proud of this club. Enjoy those drinks. Mark EV, too. I hope he's enjoying this experience. It's going to be the first of May for him, hopefully. We then get, guys, to the bottom of the seventh. Tyler McGill comes in to pitch. He's finally off the IL. McGill didn't have the best outing, but again, when you're up five zip, now's the time to bring in McGill coming off of that long-awaited stint back from the IL. McGill comes in. Yelich with a leadoff double. That's the first hit of the game. Thankfully, it wasn't hit off of Scherzer, so it really wasn't worrisome. Adamas with a strikeout. Raggy Telez, who is the Daniel Vogelback of the Brewers. Again, Vogie was on the Brewers last year, so it's funny how Keith was talking about, you know, the replacement, that being from Vogie to now Telez. And then, you know, you got to have the two sausages. I don't know what that meant, but it was funny. Telez rips a no-doubt two-run piss missile to make it a three-run ball game. However, Tyler McGill would get out of that inning without giving up more than those two runs. See Max Scherzer's smile in his postgame is hilarious. I'm not used to him smiling. He looked really happy today, and rightfully so. I'm sure he's proud of this club. But it's a 5-2 ball game, guys, as we enter the eighth inning. And in the eighth inning, the Mets kept swinging. They did not stop swinging. Triples, not double. Uh, about what? I, I talked about the triples. I talked about the triples and then the double from Vogi. Vogi was a double. The triples were from Nimmo and Lindor that we saw. In the eighth inning, however, Alonzo would have walked. Vogi would have strike out. Alonzo would steal second base then. Cannon would have fly out. Tyler Naquin with probably one of the luckiest RBIs you will get. A chopper of a single that just trickles through center, gets through the infield. That becomes an RBI single turn double because of poor placement by the defense of the Brewers. So you have Naquin in scoring position after driving in a run. It's 6-2 Mets and Tomas Nino barrels a bad boy. It, I think, what was it? A slider down away. It had some It had some cut like it was going left. And Nino, who struggled with sliders, gonna, I don't know for certain if he swung on the slider, but it was going down away. He barreled that bad boy a hunt enough. And Tomas Nito continues now his seven-game hang streak. Now with an RBI single. Makes it a 7-2 ball game, folks. And then the Mets the Brewers, neither of them do anything there in the eighth, uh, pardon me, in the rest of the eighth inning. We get to the ninth. 
Jelic facing off against Adam Adovino gets a lead off double. Adamas would have fly out. Yelich would steal second base. Telez would have strike out. And then one more final out. And the Mets secure their playoff berth. My top five is Mad Max number one. Absolutely. I know Max is talking. I'll watch the post game after I'm doing the live show here. I always get caught up. Uh, number two is Alonzo one for three with the home run. The two runs scored. The three RBI stakes. And the stolen bag. Number three stars Francisco Lindor, Mr. Smile, two for five. With the triple, the two runs scored, and the RBI. Daniel Vogel back. Hoagie Vogie, baby. Staying hot. One for five with that key two out opposite field RBI. Double. And Tomas Nito just cracks my top five. Over Eduardo Escobar's two-hit performance and over Naquin's RBI that he had himself today, too, because of the fact that Nito is on a seven-game hitting streak. He deserves to be in the top five. One for four with the RBI. The Mets live as a whole tonight, guys. Brandon Nimmo, one for four with that clutch triple, which would be a run scored and a walk. You see there, Jeb McNeil, one for four as well with a run scored and a walk. Uh, let's see, Marcana over three tonight with a walk. Eduardo Escobar, two for three with a double. Max Scherzer, Tyler McGill gives up the two earned runs. But again, this was the probably one of the better times to have McGill out there when he had that 5-0 lead. Seth Lugo with a squirrels eighth and Adovino with a squirrels ninth in the non-save situation, guys. So before we start to get some of your comments and then we bring in Joe Sorrell eventually, guys, I want to ask you, outside of Scherzer, Who's your number one star? I feel like it's got to be Alonzo if it's not Max, right? Let me know in the chat. But some key Mets updates that I want to share with you guys. As we saw, Eric Chavez is back with the team, which is awesome after having a leave of absence this past week for a family matter. It seems like everything's good on his front, thankfully. The big news, however, that did come out that we saw earlier today. Normally, I would have done a video on it if this was the offseason, but with the key game tonight, I figured let's just discuss in the postgame show. And that is the fact that it's been widely reported now that the Mets are fully expected to have strong consideration in bringing Carlos Beltran back into the Mets organization this offseason. Now, according to these reports I saw from Pat Ragazzo, I know that Bob Nightingale originally reported, so take it with a grain of salt, but I trust Pat as he was reaffirming things. Buck Showalter actually wanted to interview Carlos Beltran for a coaching ro uh, role in his staff this past offseason, but the Mets front office said no. Since then, things have taken a complete flip with the way that Buck has impacted this team on and off the field substantially. The Mets are in full agreement now to really give Beltran a shot to not just come into the organization, but potentially have a high-ranking role coaching-wise behind Buck. Whether that's a bet, I'd imagine probably be the bench coach. That's something that I could see Glenn Sherlock being moved to either a different position or away with the team in the Mets, Brian Beltron, or somewhere else. They're not going to move Eric Chavez. He's going to stay hitting coach, I'd imagine. But there's a great chance that Carlos Beltron is going to be back in the Mets organization. And there's no better time to do it than to have him working under Buck. That's something that makes so much more sense if Beltron does ever have a future either in the Mets organization or somewhere else as a manager at the MLB level. He was really close to being the manager of the Mets a couple years ago under Burry Van Wagenen. We saw what happened there. Now he's going to get a second shot to potentially be back in the Mets coaching staff. So again, we'll discuss it further when it comes to the offseason because that's when it's going to happen. But for right now, very interesting that the Mets are highly pursuing, heavily pursuing rather, the former Met. And again, now all manager for a day and Carlos Beltran. I love that move. I think it makes the best sense if you have him right after you already had Buck. So I think the comfortability level is sky high. You know, we talked last offseason about Espada and about others that haven't had enough experience as an MLB manager. They've normally been bench coaches or hitting coaches. That's why Buck has been so vital and he's proven his experience is key to be a, beyond a degree that we could have probably ever imagined as Mets fans. At least for me, Buck has blown me away in more ways than one. And Buck isn't perfect. He's had some questionable decisions with the bullpen that we know among other things but buck without him this mets team isn't where they are right now 100 percent. so i'm excited come the offseason when we hopefully get there you know late this year late this year fingers crossed that beltram may be in this coaching staff it's very interesting but thank you so much again for the donos guys let me see i thought i saw one ed flood thank you so much for your two dollar donation ed flood says lfgm cheers worry Cheers, my friend. Again, cheers to every single one of you guys that are watching. Again, we got the we got the whiskey going. Hope you guys are enjoying your drinks, whatever you may be drinking tonight. And let's enjoy this win the same way that I know the Mets are. It, it feels good. Again, step one of hopefully more great things to come this year. Malik, as of now, 
the Mets have Bassett, DeGrom, and Scherzer lined up to pitch in Atlanta. So it's just funny hearing as if the Mets are scared about Freed, Wright, or Strider as if they haven't hit against them before this year. You know, call me crazy. I know the Braves have hit a little bit against DeGrom and Max to a lesser degree, but I mean, come on, come on. It's going to be battle to the end. I will say this, as much as I despise the Braves, I have loved this race. It's been insane. I don't, and a part of me feels like the Mets wouldn't be where, where they're at this year if it wasn't for the Braves kicking their tires the entire year. You know, the Mets stay afloat. They're one game up in the division. Hopefully they stay afloat up until they face Atlanta in Atlanta for the second and final series of the year. But it's been great to see both teams battling the way that they have been. It's going to make for a really entertained final series, final matchup against the two this year. And then whatever happens in the postseason happens. I don't believe I missed any other donations. I'm just checking right now, guys. Again, appreciate every single one of you guys being in here. We're going to bring my man Joe Sorrell in the show probably in the next 8 to 10 minutes. But before I do, I want to get to some of your comments, whatever you guys got for me. Again, Joe really wants to share his reaction to this big Mets win and big Mets game. We will get to him eventually. But, man, I'm just th – this feels great. This really does. I mean, especially after everything that happened – Last week with the Cubs series for the Mets to, you know, win four straight against Pittsburgh and now to win five straight games overall and to beat the biggest guy in your path on paper and Corbin Burns tonight the way that they did. I mean, they they had no issues other than the first couple innings where Burns and Max are both cruising respectively. Once the Mets were able to actually tee up and tack on a little bit on that being a Burns and that big bomb by Alonzo just rattled him and he was never the same. And then he was out of the game not long after that. So Awesome to see what the Mets were able to do tonight. And I'm just beyond proud of this ball club. It's been truly a pleasure, a whirlwind to have followed them all year long on a day-to-day -day basis. And I mean, as a content creator, talk about timing. I started this channel on December 1st of 2020 when the Mets signed Trevor Bay as their first official signing under Steve Cohen. I would never have made content right now if the Wilpons still own this team because the Mets would not be in the position that they are right now that they were under previous ownership. So Thankfully, because of Steve Cohen that birthed this channel at Wardy NYM and then what everything that's happened over the past just under two years has been nothing short of an absolute amazing thing. And I'm beyond humbled and grateful for it. And I can only imagine what it's going to be like looking back down the lane five years from now and then looking back to seeing what the Mets have hopefully accomplished over that time with this current core group and the core groups that they're building in their farm system and guys that will certainly be made available in the years going forward in the free agent and trade market under Steve Cohen. You just know you have that great feeling that the Mets will stay a consistent competitor for as long as he is owner. And I really don't think that's an outlandish thing to say. If you followed along with everything that this man has done and only two years of owning this ball club, a lot of disarray last year in year one, it wasn't fun covering this team last year. For the most part, it was really bleak especially doing in-game live streams was absolute hell. So to see them kind of bounce, not kind of, to see them fully turn a 180, bounce back, change the complete front office, coaching staff, and they still have a lot of work to do, um, not just for the remainder of this year, but heading in the offseason, then the years going on. It's been great. Oh, my God. Seeing Vogie sitting down with his gut a little poked out and drinking a Bud Light. I mean, my night was just made. Hoagie Vogie, how you doing, baby? Enjoy, enjoy that brew, brother. You deserve it. Um, All right, guys. Let's see. Let's see what guys I want to know what what's what's your biggest takeaway? What's your biggest takeaway uh, for the Mets season so far? I would love to hear it in the live show right now for the next, you know, couple minutes before we bring in uh, that being in Joe Sorrell. Let me hear it, guys. Really, really want to see what you guys have to say. What's your biggest takeaway of this season so far? Jason, I promise you that he's going to spend this offseason. The Mets have the Mets have like the second highest payroll in baseball. Yes, they're still going to spend the offseason. They probably won't spend as much as they did this past year because they built a lot of their quarter, but they're still going to spend. The Mets spent what 250 or so mil this past offseason. They're going to spend this offseason too, upcoming, but it won't be 250. I, I doubt that. Um, we'll see though. It'll be depending on Jake Diaz, etc., and and external options, and if they do any trades. McBlam, thank you so much for Dono. Regardless of postseason results, can we please beat up on Spencer Strider? One can only hope. Uh, I, I do hope that the Mets match up against him because I want to see the best of the best from both teams when we get to that matchup in Atlanta. Ecstatic Alderson stepped down. Yep. 
yeah, he'll officially be out of his role and then moving into his uh, advisory role once the Mets make that hire. And speaking of that, um, Scott Harris, who was the GM of the Giants, was hired today by the Detroit Tigers as president of baseball operations. And he turned down the request to be interviewed for president of baseball ops by the Mets this past off season when he was with the Giants. So I guess he didn't, I just guess he didn't want to be an NY. Uh, you know, I, he wasn't the only one, but it was kind of funny to see him turn down the Mets and then at the same time go on to Detroit. I'm pretty sure he turned them down. I could be wrong, but if you, if you check, uh, I think I hit a lot of my content from the off season because not everyone needs to watch old stuff on the Mets uh, present baseball ops search. But yeah, I know that Harris was in the running for them and now he is the president of baseball ops for Detroit. So great, great pickup for the Tigers and tough blow for the Giants because Scott Harris is a great young mind in baseball. Yeah, I do got to get the October Mets shirt. You're right. I'm sure I will order it. I'm sure I'll order it or, I'll, or we'll make our own design for Believe in Queens. One of the two will happen. Jason, again, we will worry about the Mets offseason moves once we're in the offseason. Let's enjoy this Mets season right now, shall we? I think that's most important. But yeah, biggest takeaway. Season was everything I could ask for, says Mike. If uh, if on-site beats uh, the go-ahead RBI record um, same year as they retire, Willie really Mays, amazing. Yep. I think you meant to say Alonzo there. Yeah, gotcha. Let's see. Well, for today, the takeaway, they came through on the triples on skirting those runs and weren't doing that for a while. It's, nice. it's great to see, especially when they do it against a really good pitcher. That's that's my biggest takeaway. Um, one small one small step for man, one giant leap for Metkind. Great line, Bill. I know you're typing that a couple of times. I, I didn't get a chance to read it till now. Thank God the Cubs are in, in the playoffs. Hey, to be fair, to be fair, the Mets lost like every game against the Cubs in 2015 or every series at least. And then we saw what they did in the playoffs. So even <laughs> all jokes aside, even if that was the case, I wouldn't be worried. You have a strong feeling Braves will win out. I promise you the Braves will lose at least one more game before the season ends. My girl won't let me drink whiskey anymore. So it's gray goose. <laughs> <laughs> James gets a little frisky when he's on the whiskey, I suppose. I uh, appreciate that. Angel Zevi, when we win the Annalise, she promised. Awesome. Awesome, James. Thank you so much for chiming in. Great member. The change in team culture. hundred. There's a huge change. It's night and day with this team culture just in a year's time. Yeah, we thought it was going to change drastically in year one. With um, We thought it was going to change drastically in year one under Cohen. But that wasn't the case. And there were a lot of things that still weren't going the Mets way in year one from hiring perspective because they were very limited on what they could do because no one was willing to come here originally or at least be made available by the front offices of those clubs. Things have changed since then, thankfully. And the more that the Mets roll like this, the more that they're going to be appealing to the masses, not only for players when it comes to signing players as free agents, trades, but also with respective guys in front offices that would like to come here and be a part of the team in some way, shape, or form. <sighs> Let's see. Hold on, guys. Give me one sec. Then we're going to bring in my brother, Joe Serralo tonight. And then we're going to hear his raw reaction on the Mets clinching playoffs. Dave, thank you so much for the dono. Wardy, send Strider a schmuck shirt because he is. I I wish I could. I, at the same time, though, if I had his address, I think he'd have bigger problems on his hands. Thank you so much for the dono, though, Dave. I appreciate that. I got to say, I, I guys, I got to say, and this is just one quick thing about Strider. Again, this is all in good fun. The funniest thing to me is when Strider had his second post game after beating the Mets. And he was trying to, you know, dumb down a little bit his original comments about the Mets, you know, like basically not being a good team and how they hit, how they all just got lucky. He said, you know, I was tense in New York. I wasn't able to get my chamomile tea. And it was funny because I looked up chamomile tea and what are 
the reasons to drink it. And the main, the number one reason for chamomile tea is it helps with menstrual pains, like your menstrual cycle, everything regarding menstruation. And I, I lost it. I really, really wish that I mentioned that after the Mets originally beat Strider and then he made his post game comments. But I, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know he was drinking chamomile tea until after. So shame, shame on me. But that, that was funny. Just something I wish I knew sooner, honestly. But yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we will worry about Strider once we get to um, to their matchup in Atlanta. All right, guys. Now, now let's bring in that schmuck, Joe, and then we'll go forward in, here in the show. And for that, and for here, for people on replay, this is probably where I'll cut things off. So, guys, continue. Let me know your thoughts here in the live chat. Guys, let's get some hype in the live chat for Joe. Let's get some Joe spam in the chat right now. I greatly appreciate it. And guys, for people on replay, let me know your biggest takeaway from tonight's game and the Mets clinching playoffs for the first time in six years. Let me know down below. Smash that like and subscribe on. Join the giveaway. Help us get a 17.7K subs for your chance to win this awesome Max Scherzer bobblehead. Thank you so much for people. We're going to cut things off on replay right now. <laughs> 